In this video, we'll take a look at Microsoft's latest operating system, that is Windows 11. Now this hasn't been officially released yet, but I have a leaked copy of Windows 11 which I'm going to install. There's been quite a few places that you can download this from and I'll leave a link in the description on the locations where you'll be able to find this. Now I'm going to do a clean install of the operating system. To do this, I'm going to create a bootable USB from the Windows 11 ISO file that I already have downloaded. You can do this with a free piece of software called Rufus. I've already made a video previously on how to create a bootable USB, so I'll link the video in the description. Next, go into the boot menu on your computer. This is usually done by pressing escape or one of the F1 to F12 keys during boot up. Every computer is different, so check with your computer vendor on which key you should be using. So I'll stay on the removable devices for the USB and press any key to boot from the ISO. This will start to prepare the Windows 11 files for the installation process. Once the Windows setup loads, just enter the correct language along with time and currency formats. I'll select my settings here and select next. Then go to install now. It will then try and get you to activate the version, but seeing as we're only installing this for demo purposes, just select I don't have a product key. Then for Windows versions, you can select whatever you want to try here. I'm used to installing the Pro versions of Windows, so I'll go ahead and select this. And next. Accept the terms and conditions. And next. As we're doing a fresh install of Windows 11, I'll select the custom install Windows only. Now here it will ask you which partition you want to install this on. You can see that it's recommended that I have at least 18,467 meg or almost 19 gig of free space on the selected partition. In order to do this, I'm going to delete the existing partitions to free up the required space. Now be aware that deleting partitions means that you will lose all data that you have on them, so make sure you have any data backed up first, if any data is actually on them at all. And if these partitions already have Windows 10 on them, then be aware that this is what you'll actually be deleting. If you want to install Windows 11 on your current computer, then you can do this through File Explorer in Windows 10. Mount the Windows 11 ISO that you've already downloaded and run the setup file that way. I'm running this on a separate virtual machine, which is why I'm installing it this way. I wouldn't recommend installing over your current Windows 10 installation just yet, as this is only a leaked version and not the final release. So I'll go ahead and delete the three partitions that are currently here. This will give me back the 30 gig that I have to install Windows 11 on. Now with all the space unallocated, I'll select new and allocate all the space to this. This will let you know that Windows 11 will create additional partitions from this space for system files, which is fine. So we'll select OK to this. Now with the correct partition selected, click Next. This will go ahead and start copying the Windows files over to the partition and get them ready for installation. This can take a while, so I'll go ahead and speed up the video while the installation completes. So once that's finished, it will ask you to select the right country. So I'll select this and then yes. Then select the right country for keyboard layout or input method, then yes. Now I'm not interested in adding a second keyboard layout, so I'll skip this step. So once that's confirmed, it will go off in the background and do a search for updates. I'll set this up for personal use. Now here it wants me to log in with my Microsoft account. It will only prompt you to do this if your computer is connected to the internet at the time of installation. If your computer is not connected to the internet, then it will just create a local account which will allow you to log in. I have a Microsoft account, so I'll log in with this. If you don't have an account, then you can create one during the setup process just below. Select next. Then I'll pop in my password and go ahead and sign in. 
Now it will get you to create a pin on your computer which will only work on your device. This feature is available in Windows 10 but wouldn't normally prompt you to set it up on installation. So I'll go ahead and create a pin. And select OK. I'll say no to Microsoft and apps using my location details. As this is only a demo, I won't bother setting up the Find My Device feature. And I'll only send required diagnostic data to Microsoft. I'll say no to improve inking and typing. No for tailored experiences with diagnostic data. And no for apps using advertising ID. So it will now let you customize your experience when using Windows 11. So tick any of the options that interest you. I'll just tick gaming just to see if it gives me any suggestions once I log in. And accept the settings. As this is only a demo, no need to store files on OneDrive, so I'll select only store files on this device. And next. And that's it. It will go off and do a further check for updates. And then it will start to create your local profile on the computer with similar messages that you would normally see in Windows 10 when you logged in for the first time. This may take a couple of minutes, so just be patient for it to complete. And there we go, your profile has loaded and you can see straight away that Microsoft has made some interesting changes here in Windows 11. Mainly you can see that the start button and taskbar options have all moved to the center, which is very similar to an Apple device. People might be on the fence about this, but I quite like this, having all the items centered in the taskbar. And here you can see the start menu options in the middle of the screen as well. Using the Windows button, you can minimize this. If you open it back up again, you can see that Windows will show recommendations at the bottom of this menu. And at the top, it has a number of applications pinned here for quick access. If you have a lot of applications here, then you can scroll down the pages. It's easy enough to remove an item. To do this, just right click on an app and select the unpin from start. In the top right hand corner, you can see an all apps area and this will give you access to all your apps, a bit like you would see in a Windows 10 start menu. If you see an app you want to pin to your start menu, then just right click on this and select pin to start. And when you go back, you can see this has now been added to your list. The settings cog is also listed in pinned items. And if you open this up, you'll notice that it still has the same menu layout as you would see in Windows 10. If I go into system, for example, you'll see that it still has the same positioning for display, sound, notifications, and the rest of the menu options. Let's close out of this. The search option from the taskbar has a new icon which looks good, and it has a similar feel to it like you would see from Windows 10. When you do a search for, say, Windows updates, it will give you the best matches in search results. And in this case, it gives me the Windows Updates area in Settings. So it's still the same functionality that we're used to. Task View is a feature from Windows 10, and this allows you to create separate virtual desktops and customize them with different wallpapers. So you can create a desktop for personal use, work, school, gaming, or anything else, and easily toggle between them. The widgets area is a new addition to Windows 11. Now this is an AI powered personalized feed that slides out to show you info such as news, weather, a glimpse at your calendar, to-do list, and your recent photos. This is very similar to the news and interest feature found in the most recent Windows 10 update. Not much has changed with File Explorer, apart from some of the popular icons that would be visited in your profile have personalized icons. It's also reported that the edges for folders will end up with a round edge instead of the sharp pointed edge, so we'll wait to see if this is in the final release. Also, edge is built into the taskbar along with Microsoft Store which makes an appearance as a built-in icon on the taskbar settings. One big development for the Microsoft Store is that it's been redesigned and will support a whole host of apps that haven't typically been available in the Windows App Store. That includes apps from Adobe Creative Suites and Android apps including TikTok and Instagram. 
So I hope you found this video useful and let me know in the comments what you think of the new Windows 11 build. Thanks for watching and don't forget to leave a like on this video and subscribe for more tutorials.